what's up my little tiny house how are you doing today well if you're me right you sat there and wondered what was going through ray j's mind what did he keep quiet all those years yes i know chris might be a pi you know according to candace owen uh kim might be a prostitute right but at the end of the day we have to look at ray j and what made you keep quiet all those years how did you play into it and what's more we had a blast from the past from wendy williams show literally showing us how ray j's mom didn't know what was going on but baby she knew kim and that family and she knew who almost stole a million dollars from her and she literally told us where the bodies were buried but nobody would listen y'all let's actually get into this because again the one thing everybody's saying is okay ray j there's defamation there's this there's that but why 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 did you let this happen and you know at the end of the day it literally just seems like you let it happen because you were young and dumb and Kim had Chris whisper in her ear and they know what to do with you. All right, y'all ready to get this? All right, first, like, subscribe, trying to get to the million. Come on, y'all know. Let me do a little promo. My interview with Candy Burris is up. Also, check out my Real House Eyes of Atlanta recap. I recap the show each and every Sunday right after the show. And what else can I tell you? Yes, members only live on Friday. All right, Joe. How did you as a family, but Sonya, really you as the mother, feel about the Kim Kardashian, Ray J sex tape? Because I haven't seen you since then. So I know right. this is old business. Okay. Aw, shout out to old school Wendy. But okay, let's jump in. But pay attention to Ray J's face, Brandy's body language, and also everything Sonya got to say. All right, let's go. Okay, let's it is old business, and, and at some point we're gonna get beyond this, hopefully. Yes. America. Uh huh. But as a mother, I was very upset. Uh -huh. Like I could have killed him because. One of the things that you, when you are dating someone, they were dating for five years, they were in love. I saw that as a love factor. And what they, I, and I've always said, what you don't want people to see, you don't do, regardless of how much you love someone. Uh -huh. Now this does establish that Ray J's family knew, along with the rest of Kim's family, according to him, knew nothing about the deal that was made. Ray J hates to hear me say this, but I'm gonna say it. Uh huh. With all of the hoopla about it being Ray J and mm -hmm. people trying to blame him, mm -hmm. did you see him on the cover of Playgirl? No, she got Wait, her jump off from it. Uh, but we did loved you, it. Wiggly. Did you see him in in the centerfold of, of Playgirl? Oh. Okay, so I think that you should. I think that the question should be directed oh. elsewhere. Oh. Okay. Oh. What about that? Oh, why then? Why did Ray J just sit there, quiet, covering his face, embarrassed? You guys. I did a lot of thinking about this and a lot of digging and actually the clues he showed us in the live, his own DMs with Kim actually showed us where the bodies were buried. But y'all, let me just put this out there too. I think that what happened is one, Kim is a master manipulator. Seems like she might've learned from her mama. And if she did, Chris is a master manipulator. Also, I think that Ray J is just a victim of his time. Now, not a victim, right? But a victim of his time. Let's think about it. The year is 2000 whatever, right? Back then, there was no Me Too moment. Back then, women were the ones that were shamed. Now, Kris Jenner knew how to push through that and build an empire. But think about it. When the tape first came out, having a tape release made Ray J look good and it made Kim look bad. Now, Chris, because that was the manager, literally went out At the time when Ray J went along with it, having it actually, again, it was a good thing with him. He wasn't looked down, but times change. Not only did he get older, not only did he get a daughter, a son, a family, right? Not only did his mom get older, but society changed. It was no longer cool to be the person that released the tape without your ex's permission. Before the story that, and this is in my mind, how Chris Jenner was get, able to make him go along with it. One, there was money in there. Remember when he was did, said he didn't even want to sign and Kim rushed his signature and basically pushed him into it, right? But let's also think about this. 
I'm sure he was like, this will make you, she was like, this will make you look good. It's not such a bad thing. And let's leave this story for Kim. So Kim's not completely like ashamed. So people don't look too bad on her. And Ray J was like, okay, again, people were high-fiving Ray J back then. But then he got older, he got kids, he got a family, but then Me Too happened. And society changed. And it was then at a detriment that he actually even had this on his record. Think about it. The fact that his own board after Kris Jenner and Kim said those things were saying, babe, you gotta step down. And know in the era of Me Too, we cannot have somebody running a company that did these horrible things. She's talking about you were putting stuff in her while she was, we can't have something, someone at the company doing that. You wanna do Dancing with the Stars before maybe people just would have overlooked it. You know, Kim was the S person. Kim was the one that should be ashamed. But now they're like, we can't get sponsors to do that. The whole climate of society changed and it then became a detriment. It became a dark cloud that at one time when it was a very massage, I mean, we still live in a misogynistic country. You see what I'm saying? But at one time when it was actually a plus to have this happen, now it's completely not. And Ray J couldn't handle it anymore. But let's also not discount the fact, right? that Kim actually is a master manipulator. Let's not forget that what we found out in the live from Ray J actually exposing, right? You know it's serious because they took some notes, right? Now let's talk about, I think this was the third live he did where he actually showed it. It shows the DMs that Kim admitted that they lied about him on the show. And she was like, I'll have my team put out some press releases, right? Now, there's a DM that's in my old video. I'm not going to take the time to screenshot, go watch the old video, right? That shows how Kim consistently uses Kanye to kind of redirect Ray J's anger, right? Kim's the one that thought about this plot. Ray J will even tell you Kanye didn't even know about the tape, what was going on. Ray J tried to explain it to him. But remember Ray J said that Kanye demanded Steve Hurst's number because he kind of didn't believe it. And I understand that. You tell me something about my wife, something this big, and you're trying to play the good guy. I would listen too, but I wouldn't necessarily believe it. Remember that Ray J said that they sat on the floor and damn near cried because Kanye basically implied some sick stuff was going on between Chris, his kids and all this other stuff. And in the next generation, right? And this was around the time when Kanye started ranting, you're not going to do the same thing to my kids that Chris did to you. So the timeline actually makes sense, right? But how skillful Kim is at using Kanye to be the bad guy, take the heat off of her, right? It's so manipulative, but also ingenious, right? How she directs Ray J's anger at Kanye pretends to be the good guy and then somehow ends the text at saying that she's going to clear both her name and Ray J's name when she's the one that's actually causing it. But it's not over. The DM then talks about crafting a narrative that will make them both look good. I took notes from my live, as you guys can tell. I've been doing homework for you guys. Okay, let's continue, right? that they're gonna craft a narrative that'll make them both look good and about buying the video back from Vivid and deleting it off the internet forever, which is ridiculous. Cause mind you, there's no way Kim could do that. And if she could have, why didn't you do it earlier, right? It was all cap, right? But get this, um, uh, another interesting DM, that's just a glimpse into Kim's mind and how she literally works is how she makes up stories and narratives and have her people push it in the media to make up the truth. Again, we've long su uh, suspected they just make up reality. They just move from story to story because they think nobody's paying attention. And for a large part, people aren't. But how long until something sticks? You actually, actually see her mind working. Now, I say all this to say, not to take Ray J away from any accountability because there's things to be reckoned with. But I can see how when he was young, this is how they were saying it'll be okay. They were using manipulative tactics. Ray J himself said he was hesitant in signing. 
but he did sign and he went along with it. But I do think that's because back then it didn't hurt his image, but in the era of Me Too, it 100% hurts his image and it's actually keeping him from deals. I think after Kim made that joke, and his company tried to remove his own company he built tried to remove him from the board because it was a bad look and then kim chris then went on the tonight show and took a lie detector test yeah you were lying but at this point ray j's like you guys are messing with my livelihood my money my family my reputation enough of this dumbness right now um so anyway Kim's talking about crafting a narrative that will make them both look good and about buying the video back. Listen, I do know that this is, I thought was super, super, super interesting. Um, it's kind of scary how Kim is actually in the DMs. And here's the thing. There's a DM of Ray J calling her out on her BS and knowing she has no intention of doing anything she says. Now, looking at these DMs, right, and I'm reading them right now, it does seem like Kim is trying to manipulate Ray J into becoming another storyline on the Kardashians. And we all know they're starving for storylines, right? We know they're starving for storylines. It's scary how every conversation that Kim has is just a potential alternate re narrative, an alternative reality for her reality show. And the fact that you will say this is, is this is to be believed and these are actually Kim's DMs, right? Ray J is making these allegations, nothing's been proven, right? But if this is to be believed and Ray J is making these narratives, if everything's a storyline to you, does it stop anywhere? And I understand Ray J is not your child. Ray J is not even your brother, your sister, your mother, but where does this false narrative start, right? Now, Kim, is get, if these still be DMs are to be believed, is gaslighting the mess out of Ray J once it becomes clear, right, that Ray J is not trying to become a storyline or have a guest appearance on her store, show, she starts gaslighting and saying, oh, don't worry, it'll go away on its own. It's no big deal that people think that you're like assaulting me in my sleep. And it's no big deal to, think, to remind people that you release revenge for you, right? Um, and she and she literally said out the blue, I don't even want this brought back up at all, I'm paraphrasing, which contradicts what the Kim messages just wrote to Ray J. If this is Kim, right? Ray J saying there's true. So we're gonna take his word for it until it's proven differently. Now, it's important to note this. The DMs are all before the show aired, before the show aired. Um, Ray J, it seems like, thought the trailer was just hype, you know? Thought the trailer was just hype, but his name would be cleared and he would put, be put in a positive light. We all know that didn't happen, right? He talks about how uh, the episode aired and he saw Kanye even implying that people tried to extort him. This, again, mess with his money, mess with Ray J's reputation, mess with Ray J's mind. Now, I would like to actually hear Kanye, did Kim was the one saying that they were trying to extort her or did Kanye just think of this on his own? I'm guessing if Ray J's to believe, Kim's at the center of all this. Now, get this. Ray J goes on to say that that was the highest rated episode for Hulu, or at least we're keeping up with the Kardashians on Hulu. But you notice this, once Kim got her ratings, her tone completely flipped once the episode aired and she got her ratings and she went and she basically tells Ray J to go piss off. The level of gaslighting going on is crazy. The way she's like, I'm sick of this and I'm not letting anyone do this to me again. Ray J, he brings up the conversation he had with Kanye when Kanye is basically in tears about the weird stuff going on in the family, ada, 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 this, that, and the third, y'all. Go watch my live. Go watch my breakdown of the live. I deconstructed. All I'm saying is, Ray J's mother didn't even know the details because I guess they were all sworn to secrecy. She knew something was up. Because like she said, was my son on Playboy? Did my son use this as a come up? Did my son use this to exploit this? There's only one person running with this narrative and that's the alleged victim. You guys, I am actually curious, are they going to settle with Ray J? Or are they going to go to court? Ray J's been awfully quiet lately. And that lets me know that Kim's barrage of lawyers are talking to Ray J's lawyers. And maybe, maybe 
trying to get a number worked out. Baby, if Ray J pops up again, we know a number didn't get worked out, but I am ready. This goes to court, partly because, I don't know, I feel like it would get good content. I would love to do a legal analysis of this. And also, I would like them to be publicly held accountable while I live stream it. Anyway, y'all, let me know what you think in the comments, and I will talk to you later. Bye.